In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up two Forta switches in an MC lag configuration when connecting to a Forta gate. So in the topology that I'm going to work on today, we're going to have two Forta switch 424s acting as our core switches. And then we're going to have 148 Fs connecting to those core switches, a single connection to each switch for full redundancy. So in order to kind of set that up from the beginning, what we want to do is we want to log into our Forta gate and we want to click on you know by default should have this 802.3 aggregate configuration already set most forty gates come preset with the forda link so what we're going to do is because we're going to use copper connections for this mc lag i already removed ports 11 and 12 from my internal switch down here so what we're going to do is we're going to add these ports to this aggregate interface. So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to click the plus sign here and click my two interfaces. And if you don't see available interfaces here, you might have to remove them from another interface or remove any references that you have to those interfaces so that you can add them. So we're going to add these here and we're going to leave all this kind of default for right now. What I am going to enable is automatically authorize my Forta switches. So I don't have to worry about manually doing that. And then I'm going to disable Fortalink Forta split interface. Fortalink split interface is basically just kind of like a redundant connection and only allows one switch to communicate with the FortiGate at a time. So that's not what we want in a true MC lag configuration. We want both of our core switches acting as one single unit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And all this looks good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click OK. And what we're going to do before we start setting up any MC lag is we have to get our switches online, authorize them, and then we have to make a change to the LLDP profile. So I'm not going to apply any MC lag config at this point, but just to get an idea of the topology that we're going to first use to get the switches online and authorized is this topology right here. So we're going to have our FortiGate 101F and then one of our core switches, we can call this uh, core one. We're going to have directly connected port 23 to port 12 and then core two. We're going to have 24 to 24. And this is again, just so I can get them online and authorized. And then once we get them online, we'll move forward with the MC lag configuration. All right. So I made the connection from port 12. I'm sorry, from port 23 on my core one switch to port 12 on the FortiGate. And you can see that now we have a green status light on our ports, indicating that that port is up and our FortiLink port is also showing green, which means that the, the agate link is also up. So now if we, now that should take probably some time because the switches have to connect and then they have to reboot once they're authorized by the order gate, plug that in, give it maybe about 10 minutes and then log back in and go to your Wi-Fi and switch controller and then manage for the switches. Okay. And we can see that they're both online and connected. So at this point, the switches are online and we just need to make the MC lag configuration change so that we can build that MC lag. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Fortis reports. And I'm going to choose ports 21 and 22 for this. You can choose whatever one you want. By default, all of the Forta switch port, if we go to the top here and click the little gear icon, and then we want to see that LLDP profile column. So if we do that, we can see that all of the, by default, Forda switches come with this default auto ISL, which is inner switch link. So what that's going to do is it's automatically going to build a, a, a trunk between two Forda switches, um, which is how we currently have it working, right? But we need to change that profile to work with MC lag. So what we're going to do is we need to designate two ports that we want to dedicate to our MC lag 
setup, two ports that basically will act um, as an ICL between the two core switches. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use 21 and 22. I'm sorry. Yep, 21 and 22. And then I'm going to change those ports to, I'm going to change the LLDP profile to default auto MC lag. Okay. And so now that we have those configured, we're going to change our topology a little bit. All right. So after we make that change on the switches to the LLDP profile, we want to connect port 22 to 22 on core switch one to core switch two. And we also want to connect 21 to 21 between the two core switches. After that's done, we want to make sure that each switch has a connection to the FORTI gate on the ports that we designated in our interface. So each, in our case, each switch is going to have a connection from port 23. One's going to go to port 11. The other is going to go to port 12 because both of those ports are part of our aggregate link. I'm going to go ahead and make those connections right now. And then we'll take another look at how the switch topology changes on the FORTI gate. Uh, looking at the topology, I did run into a bit of an issue. Um, just, you know, me being trying to go too fast for the video, I guess. But I changed the LLDP profile on my first core switch. And you can't see it now because it's set to FORTI link. But I did change it to the default auto MC lag for ports 21 and 22 on the initial setup. But what I didn't do is I didn't change ports 21 and 22 on the second, on the core switch two. So both switches have to have that LLDP profile changed in order for it to work, right? It has to be set on both core switches on the same exact ports. So I didn't initially do that, but after troubleshooting it not coming up, I figured, I realized that I hadn't set it on the other one as well. So make sure that you do that. If you have list selected here, it doesn't really give you any indication that it's an MC lag. But I like to check this topology view right here. And we can actually see our MC lag links right here, ports 21 and 22. Each switch has a connection to our FortiGate. And we can see now that they are a MC lag peer group right here. So looks like we're in business. At this point, what I would do is now I'm going to connect the 148 Forti switches, one connection to each core switch. Now we should not. If everything's factory default, as long as your ports that you connect to the core switches are set to the default auto ISL switch LLDP profile, you shouldn't have to do anything else. It should bring up aggregate trunks to each core switch automatically. Now, Fortilink's a bit of a mixed bag, but in a perfect world, you take, let's just say 47 and 48 from 48 port switch. You connect port 47 to core one, port 48 to core two, and it should build that link. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now. All right, so just to give a visual representation of how the switches are gonna be configured after our next move, we're gonna have, after we've established our MC lag peer, we're gonna go ahead and take 47 from one of our axis layer switches, connect that to 20 on a core switch and then 48 on that same access switch and connect it to port 20 on our core switch number two. We're going to do the same thing on our access switch two. So 47 is going to go to 19 on core one, 48 is going to go to 19 on core two. And, as, and what we're going to do is we're going to hop back over to our FortiGate and because we have our switches set to automatically authorize we can see our 148s are up and running. Again, that's going to take a few minutes. Uh, it's not going to be instant. So once you connect those 148s, give it you know five to 10 minutes, they're going to need to reboot and then they'll show online. And if we want to take a look and make sure that our topology is correct, we can go ahead and select topology here. Once we click topology, we can see we have our MC lag peer group and then we have our four to switches our access layer switches one connection to each core. So at this point, really, the MC lag is established. If one of our cores goes down, we should not have any impact to our access layer switches. They should just use the one that's up in its current state. These are considered aggregate links. And so there should, there should be two gigabits worth of throughput 
from the access layer switch through the core switch. Um, and then you can use, you know, the SFP ports or however your core switches are set up. All I would do is if you're going to, I wouldn't mix SFP and ethernet ports with your redundant links, right? I would try to keep it all the same ports just to make it easy for you down the road. If you have to troubleshoot anything, or if you need help with support. So at this point, the MC lag set up. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and verify a couple things that Fortinet says are default um, on new MC lag configurations. However, if you're running this or migrating from a older configuration on older switches to an MC lag, you may just want to verify a couple of these things in the command line before you kind of write it off as complete and everything's working. Because I don't, I don't have any doubts that on newer switches, these are all set as default and are working. But if you're running old, if you're going to do this on older switches, you might want to check this out. Per Fortinet's documentation, you want to make sure that S, uh, MC lag STP aware is enabled on both of your MC lag switches. So the way that you're going to check that is you're going to basically console in or SSH in each one. From the FortiGate GUI, you can just right click and then do connect to CLI. If it's the first time that you're doing this, it should probably prompt you to put in a new password if there's no password set. If it's not the first time, it's gonna ask you for the password. So go ahead and type that in. And then what you're gonna do is config switch global. And then you're gonna do show full pipe grep MC lag. And this is the setting right here that needs to be enabled. Now, Fortinet's documentation says that it's enabled by default, but again, on older switches, older firmware, I would, if you're upgrading, I would just go ahead and make sure that that's set. So we, we took a look at that and we got it on switch on core one. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for core two. All right, so MC lag STP aware is enabled on both of our core switches. At this point, I would say that you're good to go and figure in, you know, setting up your network, and plugging things in. Now, obviously you need to change your VLANs and all that to get stuff up and running, depending on how you want to configure it. But at this point in time, I would say that we have a successful core distribution layer, whatever you want to call it, that's fully redundant to our firewall. And then we have redundant connections from our access layer switches to our core. Yeah, uh, I hope this was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next one.